Hey y'all, welcome. I'm Candace, and in this video, I'm going to share items I didn't buy from my wish list for 2022 and why. I know it's only been a few months, but we're kind of halfway through the year at this point. So I want to share everything on my list. Long story short, my priorities have changed. I cannot go and buy, I mean, I, I probably can, but I, it's not responsible of me right now. I can't go and spend $20,000 like luxury halls anymore. I can buy things here and there and then put them together to where y'all think I spent 20,000 at a time. But realistically, I can't get all the stuff on this wish list anymore. I have a daughter coming later this year and there are things that I consider luxury that I wanna buy for her, that I wanna provide for her. And that's more important than me getting everything on this list. I'm still gonna get a few things on here. It's not like I'm saying, oh, screw my wish list. I'm pregnant, you know, it's over. That's not what I'm saying at all. Realistically though, I never get anything on my wish list, but just to basically put that out there. In summary, I cannot buy everything on this list. Okay, it's irresponsible. I could, but it's irresponsible. I have other expensive things to pay for, which I will get into later on in the video. Okay, so basically I'm gonna go through my list. Everything I shared earlier this year. I'll link my wish list down below in case you wanna check it out. First, Chanel Square Mini. I didn't buy this yet. It's not because I don't want it anymore. I just don't see it being realistic for me at this point. It's more realistic than some of the other things on the wish list because it's cheaper, but it's just not something I need right now. So I can wait on this. I can push it to next year or completely take it off. I'll be fine with it. Also from Hermes Birkin. I wanted the Birkin originally, but again, <laughs> spending $10,000 plus on a bag right now, is very irresponsible of me to do. If, I don't know, it happens to come up and they're like, Candace, would you like a Birkin 25? I might have to reconsider, but I'm not going in there asking for a Birkin. I'm not gonna try to build my purchase history and all of that right now. It's just not a good time for me. This college bag might come off here from Saint Laurent. It just might come off because I haven't gotten it in the years I've had it on my wish list. I don't see myself getting it either. There's no particular reason. Same thing with the small puffer chain bag. I love it. Okay, I think it's adorable, but again, it's not something that I'm prioritizing. Same with the Celine Nano luggage bag. I was kind of disappointed and turned off with that light blue color. It's this rich periwinkle blue color, but I was told by multiple people it does not look like that in person. And I ain't got time to be chasing this bag. If it don't look like how I expect it, like I was expecting a rich blue, kind of like this rich green that I'm wearing now, which by the way, this green is the best green I've ever owned in anything. I got it from Zara a couple of days ago. Oh my God, I got the set. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, God. The Gucci Eden small backpack. I don't need this, okay? I don't need it. It's crazy how when you have new priorities come in, you reevaluate and reassess things and you're like, I don't need this. I really don't. And I don't need this backpack. Fendi first, same thing. I'll leave this bag for other people. It's a bit classier, more elevated than I am. I'm more sporty, more edgy, you know, like that. Not this classy. So I'll leave that for other people too. The Fendi Mini Maguette. This is a bag that I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna get. It's a bit more attainable and it's a bag that I see being very realistic. So we're not taking it off. Same with the Bottega Veneta Mini Jody. Yes, I got the little chlorophyll one, the one that has the metallic green, but I still want another one in a solid color. I'm not taking this off either. This is realistic. I could definitely get this. I haven't gotten one yet because I just bought one in chlorophyll. Well, I guess I did buy one in chlorophyll, but I still want one that's the Entresciato. What? Fendi Versace Baguette. I don't like them. I don't like the black and white one. I originally was like, I kind of like them, but seeing that pink one, which if you missed my Fondace video, you don't know what I'm talking about. They had this pink baguette that they, the picture leaked. It was on the runway. And for some reason they didn't release it. That's my savior because I didn't have to buy it. And I'm not in the business of selling anymore. I'm not gonna say, okay, this one's not available. So I'm gonna get it in a different color. No, I'm just gonna say, hell no, I don't need it. And that's basically what I said for these. I skipped both of them. I don't really regret it, you know? At first I was like, I might regret it if I don't get it. I don't regret it, you know? I don't. Shoes. Louis Vuitton Nike sneakers. Child, most of us ain't getting these, all right? I've gotten over it. I was over it when I saw people bidding 80,000 plus for these shoes on auctions. It's ridiculous. Like, there's no way in hell I'll pay that much for a pair of shoes. No way. 
Salvatore Ferragamo Velto 55 boots. I really like these Chelsea boots. I love Chelsea boots, but it's just not going to the price I wanted to go. I think the lowest I've seen it is 500. I still don't want to pay that. I want to pay three, four hundred dollars, and I don't see it going that low, so I don't really need these. Bottega Veneta tire boots. I don't need these either. <sighs> I don't need them right now. Balenciaga knife sock boots in black. I don't need these either because there are the there are these Le Cagole boots. I like the boots. I really love the boots. I really love the booties too. But it's at a point where I have to choose. I can't get both. I love the booties. I know more people like the boots, which are the longer ones, but I love the booties. The black ones, they're so edgy, they're so mean, they're so chic. Those are some booties I might get this week. I really like them. I've been eyeing them. I've had them on my wish list. I've had them in my shopping cart. I've not checked out yet. I'm like, can I find a 10% off coupon from somewhere? I have not. I don't think I will. These are the black ones I'm getting. I love them. They're very attainable. Mmm. Yes. Love them. Off-white Allen wrap ankle sandals. I've heard these are hella uncomfortable. No. Next. Jimmy Choo Azia 110. Okay, we'll keep those on there because, you know, a pair of classic heels is good, you know. Next, moving on to jewelry. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, the Bulgari pieces I have on here probably aren't realistic for me to get. I don't feel like driving to Houston to go look at these, all right? I have the Serpini Viper ring in yellow gold and the Viper bracelet in yellow gold. They're very cute, but I don't think I'm gonna get them. I think I can find other fine jewelry pieces that are cheaper. And you know, even though these aren't all over the place, these aren't plastered on everybody. I recently bought this ankle bracelet from Neiman Marcus. I think I spent like $1,100 and I haven't taken it off since I've bought it. It's been a couple of months now. I've showered in it. I have, you know, swam in it. I have worked out in it. And it still looks absolutely beautiful on my ankle. So I'm starting to gravitate more towards fine jewelry that doesn't have a label, that's not the Cartier, that's not the, you know, Van Cleef. I don't know. It's real gold, it's solid gold, it's carefree, it's fuss free. You know, isn't that something I have to be careful with because of the stones? Hello, Van Cleef. Isn't that something I have to be careful with with scratches? Hello, Cartier. So, yeah. Speaking of which, I have the Cartier Accru de Cartier bracelet in yellow gold. I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna get this. It might not be this year, but it's still on my wish list because I still really like it. I love those studs around the bracelet is super edgy, it's super chic, it's super me, super unique. It's not the love bracelet, it's not the just include, it's plastered on everybody. It's beautiful, I really like it. It's very pricey though. It's gonna be eight grand with tax. That's the part that, you know, hurts me to the core. But I'm gonna keep it on my wish list. Also the Prada Symbole earrings in lime green. I'm gonna keep those too. I'm still on the hunt for those. I refuse to pay over premium. Pre premium for these. Those earrings will look so good with this shirt I'm wearing. It's like the perfect green. I'm still looking. I still really like those. Ready to wear. I'm gonna take off this wool and cashmere puffer jacket from Prada. It's just not called my name anymore. Alexander McQueen polyfowl mini dress. I refuse to pay $2,300 for this dress. I'm waiting on it to go on sale, maybe a little more than 50% off, because even 50% off is still a bit much for me for a dress. Cause y'all know I don't really wear dresses like that, but I think this one is really cute. Just not $2,300 cute. Just not $17, $16.50 cute. That's what, half of $2,300, $17.50, dollars $16.50, yeah. Nice. Next, Givenchy 4G monogram jacquard crop jacket. I still like this. I still need a black classic jacket. I will leave this on my wish list. It's still something I would consider getting. Again, it's not something I want to pay full price. I've seen Givenchy on sale. I've seen it on sale. All right, child. So y'all not about to get me like that. The Slim Fit sweater and 4G jacquard. I still really like this sweater. It's still a nice classic piece. I'm not removing it just because I can wear this so many times. I have the leggings, the 4G leggings that I own. I can continue to wear those over and over. It's not a piece that's gonna be kind of disposable where I wear it three or four times. I'm like, oh, I can't wear this anymore. People are tired of seeing it. With this sweater, you could wear it over and over again, different ways. You could layer it, wear it on its own. Nobody gives a shit, okay? Balenciaga all over logo sweater. I'm not gonna take the, Mm -hmm. I'm gonna leave it on there for now, but I'm not paying $12.50 for it. I'm just gonna tell you. Okay, so last I have these trips on here. I have Fairbanks, Alaska, Montana, Big Bear Lake, 
in Arizona. So, as you know, I recently went to Saudi Arabia, which I had no idea I would ever leave the country, especially now, you know? And I had reasons for that. Not that I didn't want to leave the country, but because I couldn't leave the country. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. So, I still want to go to these places, okay? However, it is more promising that I'm going to be able to leave the country more often now because things are opening up. Their, you know, restrictions are being released or whatever, which I'm very excited about because I refuse. I told y'all before in the previous video, I don't mean to offend anybody. This is just me. I refuse to go anywhere where I have to, you know, cover myself in any type of way. I don't want to say it just because I don't want to get shadow banned or anything, but I'm not taking pictures. I'm not filming videos. I'm not having any type of memories being covered up. Okay. I'm not. And I don't mean to cover up like the abaya that I wore in Saudi, Ar Saudi Arabia or the hijab, which by the way, oh my God, I miss. I never would have seen myself. Okay, so y'all know, I don't always cover myself. I, I don't dress the most modest sometimes, but I like to show a little figure. You know, I like to show a little skin, obviously. I could have never dreamed that I would love the attire over there. Like literally, I just fully immersed myself in the culture. I bought so many outfits for this trip. I just really enjoyed like dressing for the culture, like literally, and just fully immersing myself in the culture and just, you know, enjoying the fashion and just, you know, being in full support and showing that I fully respect their culture. Cause I absolutely do. I don't go to people's country and I'm like, I'm American. So I'm going to keep that. I don't do that. You know, I'm in Saudi, so I'm going to do as much as I can to fully try to embrace that. And I enjoyed it. When I got back to America, I'm like, man, I got to retire my <laughs> Hijab, I got, I can't wear my bias anymore. Y'all know I'm a Christian or whatnot, but as a Christian, I'm fully open to other religions, okay? You know, I'm an open-minded Christian. That's how I consider myself. I love God, you know, but at the end of the day, this is my opinion, not trying to offend anybody. In my opinion, you know, it's one God. It doesn't matter what you call him, Allah, you know, it's one God. We all pray to the same person. So that's why I say I'm open-minded. And I respect Saudi culture, I really do. And not one time that I showed that I was Christian the entire time I was over there, because number one, it's not allowed. And number two, again, I want to embrace their culture. They're, they're great people, okay? I don't want to go too deep into it, but like I was saying, I really miss wearing the stuff I wore over there. I gotta go back to the Middle East soon. I don't know. I gotta go back just so I can put my clothes back on, wear my job again. I don't want to convert to Islam or anything like that, but I just really miss. My husband was like, why don't you just wear the hijab? I'm like, that's kind of, that, wouldn't that be disrespectful if I do that? <laughs> but I really miss it. I really do. I don't know. If y'all let me know, if y'all are Muslim, please let me know in the comments. I won't be offended at all if you tell me if that's considered offensive if you do that and you're not Muslim. I don't know. I'm jealous of y'all's attire. I really am. <laughs> I'm jealous. I like the stuff I wear, but I love the stuff y'all wear too. But as I, I think I went off on a tangent, I was talking about those trips. I still plan on going to those places, but now since I was able to go outside of the States, you know, I do have other places I want to go with and without baby. As I was saying in the beginning of the video, there are other things I want to pay for my daughter for. So I'm going to homeschool her as well as my other kids. God willing, I have more. I'm going to homeschool all of them because I've always wanted to travel and growing up, I've always wanted to travel. Also, I wanted to do study abroad. And of course, my parents wouldn't go let me, well, particularly my mom wouldn't go let me go out of the country like that and study anything because, you know, whatever. You know how parents are, some parents, most parents. <laughs> but I really want my daughter to experience the things I didn't get to experience. So I think homeschool is the only option for that. Also, I want to have a nanny for her. So a nanny that travels with us from time to time. I was considering an au pair. I still might consider an au pair later, but now I don't think it's a good time. I think I want, you know, a nanny that comes and goes, not somebody that lives in my house. Because with that, I think like for holidays, when I go home to Louisiana, she would have to come with me, which I wouldn't mind, but my family is kind of very conservative. In that sense, they're, they're gonna be like, who the hell is this lady? You know, why is she here? So I'm gonna have to think about that one. I don't know if I could, I don't think I can leave her here and then go home. And I wouldn't want to do that because her family is overseas, you know? If you're familiar with au pairs, you know what I'm talking about. Also, I want to hire a Spanish tutor. So since 
I was in high school, since I learned Spanish myself, I always said, okay, I really want my children to learn and grow up bilingual. I want them to know two languages and the language I absolutely love is Spanish. So from baby, I want, you know, my baby girl to know Spanish and English. So I plan on hiring a Spanish tutor that is going to brush me up and make me become more fluent. I consider myself kind of beginner intermediate in Spanish, you know, but I want to be fluent so I can fully talk to my children in Spanish, you know, when I want to and not do Spanglish. I want to be fully fluent. So two languages. I want to hire a Spanish tutor. I've already found somebody. She lives in the DFW area and she is from Spain. So she fully knows the language possibly a different dialect than a lot of people will use here, but still Spanish nonetheless. And she's still native. So that's the third thing. Fourth, when my children become of age, I want them to, even though I'm going to homeschool, like two days a week, two or three days a week, I want them to go to a Spanish school. Like a school that, like not really a private, full-on education, but like there's some schools in Dallas where they teach them all the subjects in Spanish. So math and Spanish, history and Spanish, science and Spanish. So they can fully learn this stuff, you know? And that school is expensive. The one I want to send, I know the one I want to send my daughter to is really expensive. Like you're paying for college tuition. So that's another reason why I can't just be buying everything on my wish list, you know? I have, I've always had goals and aspirations for my children that I wanted them to experience, that I wanted them to have. And I'm in a place where I can do that. So I have to be very strategic on how I spend my money in other ways. So that explains why, yeah, I have a lot of things to pay for. <laughs> Nanny, oh, the homeschool curriculum shouldn't be that expensive, okay? And uh, the Spanish school is very expensive. The nanny is also expensive because I'm not, I'm not, I, I don't believe in paying someone a non-livable wage. So it's not gonna be minimum wage. So I really have to prepare for that. I wouldn't work for minimum wage. I don't expect other people to. Even my assistant, I pay her double, more than double minimum wage. So yeah, there's that. Hopefully I didn't blab too much, but just kind of want to give y'all a perspective of where I'm at and my spending. Yes, I would still be buying luxury items, but it will not be like I used to. I can't, I have to be more careful about how I spend because there are other important things, more important things that I need to spend my money on. That's just that. However, if my financial situation changes to where I can ball out, I don't know if I'm gonna ball out. I might, I probably will. <laughs> but yeah, let me know if you have any questions. If you have any advice you could offer me, if you have a nanny, if you have an au pair, if you have a Spanish tutor, another language or anything, any type of advice you could offer me, please let me know in the comments. I think that's it. I'll leave another video here in case you missed it. Talk soon. Thanks for watching.